By 2020, the U.S. military has pledged to obtain half of its energy via renewable resources, with the Navy even saying that they will run their fleet on 50% biofuels. At this current time, the Navy sources about 17% of its energy from nuclear and renewable sources. Unfortunately, biofuels comprise a very minimal amount of this percentage. The Navy's interest in biofuels covers a limited range, as they are looking exclusively for drop-in fuels. These types of biofuels require no modification to machinery in either aircraft or ships, and are comprised of military specification fuel that is blended with biofuels, and will only be accepted if certain cost and performance requirements are met. The plan is a great move for the military, as it makes political sense to cut our reliance on oil from volatile regions around the globe, as well as serving as a model for other establishments in the future. The growing acceptance and legalization of marijuana is helping the U.S. cannabis industry expand well beyond niche status. It's currently forecast to pump between $24 and $44 billion annually into the country's economy by 2020. At the upper end of that forecast, published in the Marijuana Business Factbook 2016, this $44 billion mark includes not only sales of marijuana, but also any other dollar that is added to the industry, from hydroponics to grow lights. If this estimate is correct, it would nearly equal the annual revenues of such Fortune 500 firms as FedEx or Lockheed Martin. This $44 billion is also just shy of Panama's $46.2 billion GDP and ahead of Serbia's $43.9 billion. Cannabis sales in 2015 were pegged at $5.4 billion, a 17.4% increase over last year's numbers. Numbers like this would have been unthinkable a decade ago. With three states having legalized cannabis, and many more addressing cannabis legislation this year, there will soon be huge new markets for the marijuana industry, propelling its growth for years to come. CERN is the biggest particle physics laboratory in the world. More than 10,000 physicists from around the globe come to CERN to carry out experiments whose aim is to advance the understanding of the fundamentals of matter and the nature of our universe. By 2020, CERN will have upgraded the Large Hadron Collider to the High Luminosity Large Hadron Collider. Currently, the LHC can deliver the highest luminosity beam of any proton accelerator in the world. Luminosity is a crucial indicator of accelerator performance, as it's proportional to the number of particles colliding within a defined amount of time. Since discoveries in particle physics rely on statistics, the greater number of collisions, the more chances physicists have to see a particle or process that has eluded them up to that point. The aim of this upgrade is to try and increase its luminosity by a factor of 10, meaning that 10 times more particles will collide during the same period of time allowing us to obtain accurate measurements of fundamental particles and enable physicists to observe rare processes that occur below the current sensitivity level of the collider. Unfortunately, earlier this year, engineers stumbled across a problem that might slow down their future upgrades. Currently, there's no space for new cables in the injectors that accelerate particles before they enter the LHC. In the past, when the collider was upgraded, the engineers would replace the old cables with new ones. During this process, the old ones would often be left in place, even though they were redundant. The problem is that now a heap of obsolete cables are blocking the way to install new ones. This is potentially risky, as pulling out the incorrect cable could cause massive complications, leading to catastrophic safety failures. Liberia is one of the last strongholds of intact forest in West Africa. These forests are the home of many unique species of plants and animals, and many Liberians rely on the forests for direct economic benefits. According to data collected from the forest monitoring site, Global Forest Watch, Liberia lost nearly 400,000 hectares of forest from 2001 through 2012, which equates to about 4.4% of its total tree cover. Even the country's protected areas are not immune to deforestation. For instance, a protected area in the northwest portion of the country was reported to have lost 12% of its tree cover between 2001 and 2013. This is all planned to change in 2020, as Liberia will be the first nation in Africa to halt deforestation in return for development aid. 
This momentous deal has been written up by Norway, who has planned to pay the impoverished West African country the equivalent of $150 million to stop deforestation by 2020. Liberia's forests aren't as big as other countries, but it is home to about 43% of all of West Africa's remaining rainforest, and is home to the last remaining viable populations of many species, including western chimpanzees, forest elephants, and leopards. Unfortunately, over the last couple years, Liberia's forests may have caused more harm than good, as the logging revenue funded Charles Taylor's regime during the brutal civil war that ended in 2003. Since then, the logging industry has failed to create a sustainable source of income, as logging companies routinely log illegally, dodging taxes while causing huge and irreversible damage to the rainforest. So far, experts are skeptical of this deal, as both Norway and Liberia will have to put in a great deal of effort to make sure corruption doesn't seep in. But if this scheme goes to plan, this sort of deal should be a template to encourage other countries to venture down this route. While the future is difficult to predict, available freshwater resources will certainly decrease in the coming years due to the increasing demand of a growing world population. Water is one of our most precious resources, yet our infrastructure is failing. There are many areas throughout the world that are already experiencing a shortage of water resources. In the near future, all of these countries will see their water issues worsen, with many countries being exposed to this problem for the first time, meaning millions will have to learn to live with this horrendous burden. Researchers currently predict that by 2020, about 30 to 40 percent of the world will witness water scarcity, with some of the worst affected areas being countries in East Africa, such as Sudan, and parts of the Middle East. In the Middle East, Swaths of countryside have been reduced to desert due to overuse of water. Iran is one of the most severely affected. Heavy overconsumption, coupled with poor rainfall, have ravaged its water resources and devastated its agricultural output. Similarly, the United Arab Emirates is now investing in desalination plants and wastewater treatment units due to water reserves constantly dropping. As Crown Prince General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahan admitted, for us, Water is now more important than oil. Only by changing today's approach to future water management and water productivity can we ensure a prosperous future. Thanks for watching the newest episode of Future Earth. If you enjoyed it, why not check out some of our other videos? Like the one about mind controlling fungus that can take over a brain, or how Earth will look like in 2019. So, four years from now, what are your predictions of what the world will look like? Make sure to leave them in the comments below. And until next time, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.